You know, a lot of people waste a ton of time in Photoshop. They do things in a longhand way. I kind of have a philosophy. If I have to do something more than twice, I feel like I'm doing it wrong. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you how I would process 10 images. I'm going to fit them all within the same size, but recrop each one and then export them out as JPEGs that I could use on website, Instagram, whatever. But I'm going to show you how to do this uh, automating Photoshop so you don't have to do it all manually. Hey Cafe Crew, uh, today I've got a Photoshop tutorial slash tip that's probably going to save you a ton of time. If you aren't doing it this way, you're definitely wasting too much time in Photoshop. So this is one of those tutorials that actually pay for itself in the time you invest watching. Okay, the challenge today is I'm going to take 10 images and I want to resize them at 1080 by 1080 so I can put them on Instagram. Now, what I want to do, though, is I want to reposition them. Some of them are going to be portraits, some are going to be landscape. I want to get the best crop on each one and then export it out as a JPEG. So that's 10 images in, 10 images out. How would you do it? So right now, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks that even if you're not doing this specific task, it's going to help you a lot when it comes to batch processing images and getting things done quickly. Let Photoshop do all the work. And if you like the idea of that, hit the like button right now. So why don't we jump in and get started? So the first thing I'm going to do is I want to get these 10 images open and I want to get them all inside the same document. Because if you open the 10 windows and you're dragging them, you know, you're wasting a lot of time combining them. So what we're going to do is choose file and we're going to go down to scripts. And these scripts enable Photoshop to do different things. So what we want to do is we want to load files into a stack. So this window opens and this is where we're going to choose it. So I'm going to click on browse and I'm going to browse to my photos, which a batch are these ones here. And you can see they're all different shapes and sizes. So let me select them all and I'm going to click open. It loads it in here. And by the way, if you had them open in a whole bunch of different windows, you could have actually just chosen add open files and that will take all the open files that they currently inside all the different windows and combine them into one. That's probably another useful thing to know. Okay, so we're not going to be doing any of these options because we're not creating panoramas or focus stacking. We're going to click OK. Now Photoshop is going to open all of these images. And here we go. Notice what's happened is they're all stacked one on top of each other. That's great. But now we want to do a 1080 by 1080 square. So this is what we're going to do is we're going to go under the crop tool. We're going to click on the crop tool and then I'm going to go with height and resolution and I'm going to type in 1080. And of course, these can be any size you want by 1080. And I want to set my resolution to 72. So that's going to be a screen resolution. So if we kind of hold down the alt or the option key and we zoom out, we can see, OK, there's our square crop right there. Now, some of these images are obviously going to be much bigger than other ones. So what I want to do is I'm just going to click and drag this down so we can kind of fit within the smaller images. So this way, this is going to create a new crop size where we're not scaling images up and down. Now, we're going to turn off delete crop pixels because we don't want to delete anything. And we're just going to hit enter or click the little check mark. And now what this done it's actually just created a little box. If I hit Control T or Command T, we can see, you know, hey, the whole photo is still there. But what it's done is it's created a 1080 by 1080 window. In fact, let's just zoom in a little bigger so we can see this. All right, so now we've got the window, and all we need to do is just reposition each one. So if I wanted to go this way and kind of show more of Taylor's bow, I could go that way. All right, hide that, go to the next layer. Got some nice flowers here. All right, so what we've done now is we've got all of these images. Let me just click and drag down to turn all the eyes on. All right, for the next part is exporting these. I've seen people do it where they will choose save as, you know, file, save as. I've done this, by the way. Hide it, go to the next one, select it, choose file, save as. Yep, that's how I used to do it. 
And this is how you used to do it if you still do it this way, because we're going to change that right now. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose File, Export, and then under Export, you're going to choose Layers to Files. And we're going to choose our destination. When I drop it on the desktop so we can have a look at it, put it under New Folder. We'll call it Squares. That's our destination now. And we can rename them. So why don't we call it My Project. And we can choose Visible Layers Only, but I'm going to use all of these here. And the file type I want to use is a JPEG. And I'm going to choose about a 7 quality. And of course, you know, we can include our profile. And now just hit Run. And it's done that fast. Open Squares and look at this. Here they are. So notice there's the name, My Project 0001. And so we can pop these open. And if we look at these, there they are. 1080 by 1080 squares, all of them. Now, if you wanted to rename these, there's another way you could do this too. One of the ways I like to do this is with Bridge. Okay, so we open Bridge. And what I like to do is just take this folder, drag it into the preview window, and that will load this folder into Bridge. So now it's looking at this folder. I don't like these names, so I'm just going to hit Command A to select all of these. And then we go up under here, and I'm just going to choose the batch rename. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add something. Let's make this text, and I'm going to call it my picks underscore. And over here, we're going to use a sequential number. And we're going to choose two digits. And we're going to start at one. And notice they're going to be called my pick one. Hit rename. Notice one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I hope you learned something new there. If you did, let me know in the comments what you found new or interesting, and also any suggestions. Just drop them there in the comments underneath. And by the way, if you're new here to Photoshop Cafe and you want to get fast at Photoshop and you want to learn how to make your photos and your images look better, consider hitting that subscribe button right now. Become part of the Cafe crew, and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Turn on all those notifications so you know when I upload that new video, which is usually every Tuesday. So anyway, guys, if you like this, smash the like button into dust. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be at WPPI this week, so if any of you are there, come up and say hi. Love to meet you all. And also, I'll do some interviews there. And if there's anyone that you know is going to be there that you'd love me to interview, drop that in the comments as well. So anyway, guys, until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.